we are with Chase Maggiano from Washington Bows, and we have just experienced a marvelous musical experience here at his home. So I want to ask him a couple of questions about it. So I'm going to move the camera over to him. All right, Chase. So tell us what what is this banjo ukulele? What is it that you're doing here? This is a violin. All right. So. Define what a violin is for us. What's the history of it, and what's what what makes a good one, what makes a bad one, you know, and yeah. why should a kid be playing a violin? So the violin, as you see it right now, uh, this came from not this specific one, but this sort of shape of an instrument came from the late 1600s in Italy. Um, it was a descendant from another instrument that was bigger and kind of more you know, just different. Um, it's changed a little bit throughout the years. But basically, this has been one of the main instruments in all of music for the past 400 years, 500 years, something like that. It has four strings. There are four strings. But you make so much different music out of four strings. How do you do that? There are lots of different notes you can play on each of these strings. That was one string. That was another string. And... Um, because you can play so many different notes, you can even play multiple notes at one time. On one string? On two strings. On two strings, okay. All right, so that's if key. you can play like two notes, I guess I better tighten my bow. You can play like two notes at a time, like this. You can play four notes at a time. Lots of different things you can do with it. All right, so I noticed that the bow, holding the bow, you don't hold the bow like you're sawing a piece of, of lumber. No. You, I, I saw tonight that the bows, which I never noticed because we were never up this close before, mm -hmm. that the bows were sort of somewhat turned sometimes, and sometimes they're flat on. Tell me about the holding of the bows. So when you're holding them, so first of all, here's the violin. It has these four strings. There's all this wood. The wood can resonate. But in order to get the strings to do anything, you need this thing to pull tension from the string. Like that. Okay. So without this, there's really no sound. So this is half your sound right here. Okay, so does the, whatever it is, that white part of the thing, does that make the sound? Or is it the piece of wood that holds it? Or what All makes- All of it. The piece of wood right here, this is made of Pernambuco. It's a wood it's a tree from brazil okay um, only grown in brazil and this stick is very important because the way it's cut the density of it the way it's bent you can heat it up with flame and bend it so that you get different tension is very very important likewise this white stuff is the horse hair it's mongolian horse hair so it's not just the horse that you went riding on last no week. it's not no, this comes from so it, okay um this gets changed every four to six months okay um this is also very important because how loose or tight the hair is will change how much tension you have on your bow talk about the mechanics that are right in there that yep. just did that so you you have the stick and then you have the hair. And normally, if you're not playing, you want the hair to be loose. So you loosen it. There's a screw in here. Okay. That screws into this little eyelet here. Okay. And you want to keep it loose when you're not playing because if, it's, if the wood stays tight overnight or for weeks at a time, the wood will bend in a way you don't want it to bend. It'll lose its tension. So when you're playing, you tighten the screw to give yourself a little bit of tension so you can do things like this. Like really fast strokes like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. That's really important. Cool. What the wood is made out of, the density of it, how it's cut, how thick or thin it is at different parts, all changes the sound you get in your violin. So here's an example. Uh, yeah, here. That's one bow. Here's a different bow. Now that was a classic so violin sound there. I'll go back to this other bow. 
bigger sound, more round. Yeah, a little deeper. The other one sounded more like an old record player. Okay. And that's just because the stick is different. The wood is different. The tree was different. The way it was cut is different. So can you pick that when you go to buy a bow or have a go? Do you, so, okay. Can you buy a bow that's, or do you custom make bows? What's the, what is the deal for a violin player? How do they, what's, tell me about bows. Well, in my job, my, in my profession, my job is to do two things. I repair and restore bows that are being played on by musicians right now. And I also go to source bows for musicians to purchase because they need the best sound they can get if they're going to play at a high professional level. So when I go to source bows, there are, there are a few things I look for. One of them is how much roundness of a sound can you get? How beautiful a tone can you get? The other is the condition. You want to make sure the bow isn't cracked or... You know, so is that the artist's choice of the sound that they make, or is it... Well, I, I think every artist tries to make the best sound they could. But does yeah, each artist have their own... Does some each artist have their own sound? So you couldn't... Would, the, would one artist play with somebody else's bow and make a totally different sound to it? Oh, absolutely. My, the, the mechanics of my arm are way different than the mechanics of another violinist's arm. Okay, so the, absolutely. the arm makes... The a, same bow can sound different on different... different people okay cool absolutely cool cool so tell us a little bit about this violin that you're holding this is actually a really special violin i just grabbed it uh, from upstairs um, for this video um it came from germany or czechoslovakia and i say or because we're not quite sure when and where this was made we know it was made before world war ii um, we also have this ornamentation on the back of a Star of David. Mm -hmm. It's very likely that this violin was uh, owned by someone that um, fell victim to World War II, to, mm -hmm. to the atrocities of World War II. Uh, there are a collection of instruments like this traveling the world, and this is probably in that realm of, uh, of instruments. And when I found it at an auction, I thought it was really interesting and beautiful, and it was just sort of sitting there in, in disrepair, and so I wanted to get it and, and bring it back. So I had a, a friend of mine restore it and bring it back to what it should be. So tonight we had a beautiful presentation from a group called... Sound Impact, collaborative group of musicians that I'm involved with. And you're on the board of Sound board Impact. Of Sound Sound Impact. Impact. They're a great organization. Uh, and our mission is to use music to ignite positive change in communities. And we do that in a couple different ways. Uh, primarily through in-school programs. Oh, the music started. And uh, in-school programs and through uh, programs to bring students from other countries to the U.S. to study at high levels in festivals during the summer. And so how did you get involved in that? I have friends that roped me into it. Okay, there you go, there you go. And what's, what's the next big project for Sound Impact? The next big project for Sound Impact, we have a lot of projects going on. Okay. Uh, the, the, the one most on our mind is a large fundraiser in December. It's a soiree happening at the Mexican Cultural Institute on December 10th. You also mentioned that there was an embassy event or something that was also possible coming up. There is. It is coming up. We don't have a date yet. Okay. But we are doing a private dinner for about 40 people at the ambassador's residence from Panama. Very good. And if somebody wanted to be involved in Sound Impact, what could they do? I mean, volunteer, volunteer, go online, donate. What are, what are the options that they can do? We are a lean and mean organization. Our budget is not big. We don't want it to be big. We just want to do really good work. So we love volunteers. I'm a volunteer. Most of the board are volunteers. Um, I guess all the board are volunteers. Um, what we love is people who want to volunteer their time or expertise and talents and, and brain power. Um, and they don't have to be musicians, right? No, not at all. Absolutely not. No, no, no. I'm, I'm one of our newest board members is somebody who's involved in public school education. Cool. And you mentioned mean, but no one up there was mean tonight. No, that no, was no. the most we're really fun, night. most friendly group of people really, I've ever met. Really nice so great. Yeah. yeah, and of course we also uh, welcome donations. That's not our primary goal. Our primary goal is to do really great work in the community. If people wanted to donate, how would they do that? Uh, just go to soundimpacts.org. Very good. Well, Chase Magiano, thank you so much 
for chatting with us tonight and showing us this fabulous violin and your bows from Washington Fine Bows. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.